Hey there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome into the studio. My name's Brittany, if we haven't met already. Today, I am doing a wool washing project. I have the Shetlands sheep wool to clean and process. This is the entire, entire fleece from a Shetland sheep, and I'm going to process it and clean it. This is from a local farm near where I live. So I'm excited to process this and turn it into wool that I can use for spinning and dyeing and other projects. So I have a small pile here that I've done some processing on. You can see there's still dirt coming out of it when you shake it out on my table. So it's not totally processed. I still have some work to do on this, but I have done an initial wash and got a lot of the dirt and the grease out of it. So I'm just gonna continue working at it, doing some combing and carding to prepare it for whatever project I to decide to use it for. I am using this book, The Art of Washing Wool, Mohair, and Alpaca. This is my by Mary Egbert, and you can find resources from her on her website and YouTube channel. Um, she's put together this book all about the details of how to wash wool without ruining it. And so I read through this and I'm going to use some of the tips and tricks that she suggests in here on my wool, one of which being using water that's at a certain temperature. So yeah, I'm excited to dive in. I have had some poor experiences with washing wool in the past or processing fiber myself in the past. When I was a kid, I was really into spinning and wanted to do the whole process. So my parents helped me source a sheep's fleece, which is the entire or most of the fleece from a sheep that's been sheared off the sheep. And I spent almost an entire summer, maybe it wasn't as long as I think it was, trying to wash that wool and heating buckets and buckets and buckets of water or pots really on our stove and carrying it outside and processing trying to clean the sheep's wool. I ended up felting a ton of it on accident and a lot of it ended up not being usable and yeah the sad outcome was that the type of sheep that we had gotten the wool from uh, we weren't super educated in the fiber world yet. The sheep's wool had come from meat sheep which are great for their purpose but they are not bred or raised or taken care of in order to protect the fleece or the wool and so it was totally matted and gross full of vegetable matter and poop and all kinds of nasty stuff and so it was just a nightmare to process and I did my best my little 12 year old self was like I'm going to do this and I didn't make it so here I am again multiple years later trying this for the second time around and I'm hoping this process goes better so my first step is going to be laying this out on a sheet on the floor I'm going to spread it out this is just kind of all folded up in this bag I'm going to lay it out on the floor and just kind of get an idea of what I'm working with try to pull out any of the gross bits uh, pull out some of the vegetable matter, which is bits and pieces of hay or straw or um, anything that the sheep picked up as it was wandering around through the fields and is still in the fiber. Yeah, one thing I do know about wool fiber, this is true for dirty wool fiber that's still in the grease or still dirty, and for fiber that has been cleaned, so roving or batting or anything that's been thoroughly processed and is ready to spin with. You don't really want to store it in plastic bags because wool does sweat and as it heats up and cools down, it heats up and cools down, it sweats and so it can start to become matted and almost felt itself in plastic because there's no uh, circulation of air or no breathability in the plastic. So I do know that I need to get this out of the plastic bag as soon as possible and just allow it to breathe and maybe store it in a paper bag or something like that uh, in order to store it between washing or when I'm working on it. So let's go lay this out on the floor and I'm going to see what I'm working with. Okay, I'm gonna lay this sheet out on the floor to cover and catch any dirt that's going to fall out, fall out because there's going to be a lot of dirt that falls out. And then I'll lay out the sheep's wool on top 
and go from there. Okie dokie. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that this doesn't look like it has anything that is unmanageable. There's a little bit of yellowing, but I think it's just from the lanolin, so I'm pretty sure that will wash out fairly easily. However, it does have some scurf, which I read about in this handy dandy book. I'll put this in the link below if you're interested in washing your own wool and want a resource. Mary Egbert has a lot of good tips in here. Um, in her book, she mentions scurf. Scurf is like a um, dandruff for sheep and this wool fiber does have some of that in the base. If I look in here, there's little flecks of scurf. Now, she does not say specifically that that is something to, to deter you from washing wool by hand or that you shouldn't wash your wool by hand if you do have scurf in your wool fiber. However, she does mention that it is difficult to remove because it's kind of sticky and it sticks to the fiber. So, that's the bad news. I am um, should have looked this fiber over when I bought it at the farm. Uh, I bought this at a wool sale at a local farm and I didn't because I didn't know what I was looking for. Now I do, so if I go back, I'll give a, a quick look before purchasing it. Um, she does mention scurf is, can be difficult to see when the fiber is raw because, or dirty like this, because it kind of hides in the dirt and the coloration of the fibers. But I can see it in the base of the fibers. There's little patches of it here in the base. And I'll, sh I'll try to show you some close-up shots. Um, it's kind of hard to film because it almost blends into the color of the fiber. But I'll show you some of that. Okay, so I also have this Jacobs fiber, which is a model fiber. There's brown and white patches on this sheet. And I look this fiber over and it doesn't look from what I can see in, in the raw with all the, the dirt and the grease. Doesn't look like this has any scurf in it. So I think I'm going to work on washing this guy while I decide whether I want to do the Shetland fiber or not. This fiber is going to take more effort to get all the scurf out and all of the vegetable matter. So I think I'm going to sit on this while I get this guy started, um, mentally sit on this guy while I get this Jacob wool started and uh, then I might do a small batch of this to test it out. Let's chat steps before I get started washing the wool. So I've taken a couple notes from the book, um, The Art of Washing Wool, Mohair and Alpaca by Mary Egbert. And one of those notes is that I'm going to keep my water temperature at 125 degrees Fahrenheit in order to not burn the fiber or harm the fiber in any way and maintain, um, maintain that temperature so that it doesn't felt. If it goes from hot to cold too quickly, if there's a shock, then it will cause felting and I don't want that to happen. And then allowing the wool to sit in that water for 15 minutes at 125 degrees Fahrenheit to allow the lanolin, which is the natural oils on the fiber, to melt in the heat of the water. And then we can drain that off and get rid of that and then be able to do another wash if we need to. I'm not going to dump the water that I use out or down my sink uh, because that sounds like a terrible idea, sending grease down your sink. Uh, instead, I'm going to have some sort of bin or a plastic trash can or something. I still have to find what I'm going to use to discard the water baths. I don't just want to dump them outside. I kind of want to save the liquid for future watering my garden or, um, I don't know, 
use it for something useful. Yeah, so I'm going to figure out what I'm going to use there. And the way I'm going to be processing these locks is to lay them out so that the fibers are laid in the same direction. Uh, the tip, the tip in one direction and then the base where it was trimmed from the animal in the other direction. So I'll lay them out like so. So the tip here and then where it was cut from the animal, I'll lay all the, a bunch of these locks, which are these bits of fiber that are combined into one segment. I will pile those up in the same direction and lay them in a bin, which then I'll pour the water, I'll put the water in first and then I'll lay the locks into the bin, submerge them, allow them to sit for 15 minutes and then come back and strain that water off and decide whether these need to be washed again. I might need to open the locks up a bit by fluffing the tips out to get all the dirt out of the tips. These tips look pretty nice. They don't look like there's much dirt in, in them. And so I'm feeling pretty good about how this washing process is going to go. Uh, yeah, so that is my plan. Now I'm going to go find something to wash these in, some sort of bin, and something to pour the used water into once they are washed. It just took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to find my power scour or unicorn fiber power scour. <sighs> I think that's a tip off that it's time to clean the studio. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so here we go. I've got my bins, my fiber, and my power scour. There are some notes in the Mary Egbert book on the quality of your fiber and how to process different um, grades of fiber. So like a medium, fine, or coarse. He said that backwards. Coarse, medium, or fine. The Jacob sheep, I think is probably a medium. So yeah, I'll treat it as a medium fiber, but I'm going based off of 125 degree Fahrenheit water and some power scour. And I'm just gonna go from there to see how this works out. I read through the book. I have the knowledge in my head. I'm applying as much as I know how, but really I learn best from experience. So I'm just going to see how this goes, go for it and go from there because that will give me the information for the next time. Usually I use this meat thermometer, this uh, Maverick barbecue thermometer because it has a nice probe that I can stick in the water with whatever I'm dying, uh, and in this case, the water temperature. But this guy, the last time I did a test with it, it was reading some really wonky readings or temperatures. So I think it's broken, which is disappointing because I have now realized I don't have a thermometer to gauge the exact temperature that I need. I know that 125 degrees is just to the point of discomfort for me to be able to put my hands in. Um, if you're sensitive to water or sensitive to heat, then you probably don't want to put your hands in the water at 100, at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But I think I'm going to use that as a gauge to be able to measure the temperature of the water that I'm using um, because I don't want to run out and get a new thermometer right now. I want to get to washing wool. So here we go, working off the cuff with what we have and maybe not the tools that we need. <laughs> okay, my first step is going to be filling up one of these bins with water. I have to decide which one I'm going to use. I think this big one would work well because of this basket sits in it. So I would put enough hot water in here to fill it to the rim of the basket here. I'm hoping my sink water is hot enough because I don't really want to heat water um, over and over again to wash this wool. It just will take a lot of time. I've tried that before in my childhood story and it just drags out the process and frustrates me because you have to wait all that time. But on second thought, I might just fill up a kettle and have a hot kettle going on the side in case I need to raise the temperature of my bin of water at any point. 
Oh, okay. Ooh. That's warm. That's probably warm enough. It's like hot bath water, so probably not comfortable to get in, but comfortable to put your hands in. Okay, so there's that. Now I am going to set up my the colander basket with fiber. And I think I'm also going to do this so that I'm separating out the brown and the white sections, not um, exclusively. If there's pieces like this that are kind of combined, I'll just pull out the larger pieces and then leave like this little bit of fiber here that's white colored, I'll leave that behind. And the way I'm finding the tips is by finding these little curls, pulling those out. I'm not sure exactly how much to put in this basket, so I'm just laying out a batch like that, the tips down and the bases up. There's my basket with the locks laid out. I don't know what I'm doing yet, so yes, that's my disclaimer. Now here we go. Okay, hot bin of water, check. I have one of my white hairs in there. Now some scour power, this is Half a tablespoon of power scour per gallon of hot water. Soak for 15 minutes. Do not rub or add a table. Okay. So I have about three gallons. I have about three gallons of water here. I'm going to use a tablespoon and a half power scour. punch some little orange peel circles. I want to try making a garland and the punch that I had happened to be a circle. So I went ahead and did circles, but I want to do stars for Christmas or um, maybe hearts. Oh, pomegranate hearts would be cute for Valentine's. Valentine's was last week, so hearts are on the brain. Okay, that's in tangent. Okay, I stirred in that soap and now I'm going to adjust this camera so that you can hopefully see in the pot. Okay, so I set my basket in and the basket sits just under the water here. You can see the wool is set in there. Now I'm just going to allow that to sit for 15 minutes to loosen up the lanolin and then come back and see how that worked. So now I'm going to put this mostly clean batch of wool into a bin just with water. I'm not putting detergent in here or the scour li liquid. I'm going to press that in and allow that to sit in the hot water. And it's still looking fairly murky, so I may need a couple batches yet to get all of the lanolin out of this one. So then I'll move to the other one. Again, that's looking pretty murky. Squeeze the water out of this guy. Okay. 
make a new batch of water for this one and this one as well. Oh yeah, that's really dark. This guy is probably going to need more scour liquid because this bin is very dark. Okay, I finished washing the Jacob Sheep fiber and I have it laid out here. So I have a batch of darker fiber here that I did separate and then a batch of lighter fiber that I separated out as well. I have it laid out on this towel down here so that it can dry and I'll process it as soon as it's dry, probably tomorrow. It can take more than a full 24 hours to dry wool depending on how much wool or how much water is in the wool to begin with wool can hold a lot of water without feeling wet so we'll see how long it takes this to dry this fiber has a little bit of vegetable matter in it still so i'll need to process that out i only have carters i don't have a have combs so i'm not sure exactly how i'm going to process this fiber i think combs would be best to flick the tips and <clears throat> get all the vegetable matter out of it. Yeah, so I'm excited to process this. I haven't, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about doing that, whether I'm going to card the fiber and uh, maybe I could use the cards like in an unconventional way. I'm not sure, but combing would probably be best. I might end up carding. That's a problem for me tomorrow or whenever this dries, so I'll figure that out then. But this process went fairly smoothly. If you are a skilled wool washer and you know what you're doing and you're watching my process and shaking your head because I really screwed this up, please be kind in the comments because this is only my second time, only my first somewhat successful, I feel like this was a success time washing wool. I love constructive criticism or feedback on a, your your ways of washing wool if you have them. If you've never washed wool before, hopefully this is inspiring to you to try it at least once. I went through probably 12-ish um, gallons of water for a pound of wool, which is a lot of water, which is why I wanted to save it for the garden, so I had some five gallon bu buckets on my back porch that I just started filling with the water, and I believe I can use that on my garden beds, so I'll save that for watering water. Okay, so this was a fun process. I'm pretty tuckered. It's kind of pretty much hands-on. I was cycling it through the four different bins. Once I got rid of the large blue one, decided that one wasn't working for me very well. So cycling it through, managing the water heat and trying to get it as clean as possible without felting it. I think I did pretty good on not felting it. It feels pretty nice. I'll see in the carding and combing process. But my hands are very dry and itchy and kind of um, could start. I've never had my hands crack, but they feel like they could. They just feel very dish panty and super duper clean and almost like my finger print has rubbed off because they're so smooth. Anyway, I need a good hand salve because my hands are really uncomfortable right now. If you need a good recipe for a homemade hand salve, I have a video on making hand salve out of shea butter, coconut oil, and some other natural products. So check that video out in the description below or up here. I think it's this side. Gosh, I always get this confused. So I will see you tomorrow or whenever this wool dry. Actually, I'll check in tomorrow and just update you on where the wool is at, if it's dry or not. Until tomorrow. Good morning. I have the 
washed wool here. It's still in the process of drying. It hasn't completely dried, so it still feels a little damp to the touch, which means I probably have at least another day to allow it to dry. I'm going to lay it out on my table rather than this towel because the towel is now damp and we'll just continue to um, hold the water in on the wool. So I'll move this off onto my table here to continue to dry it out. I found some pieces that were dry and so I went ahead and did some test carding on my carters. I don't have combs so I didn't do any combing of this yet, but I intend to get a set of combs and then do combing with these because I can pull the tips out and I can use the combs to comb out and create a batch of fiber that the fibers I think are going in the same direction, which then means that I have the option of doing a worsted wool as well as a woolen, sorry, worsted yarn as well as a woolen yarn. Worsted yarn being one that's a little bit harder and stiffer to the touch and it's stronger and woolen and the fibers are going in the same direction. Tip to the cut edge, they're going the same direction where a woolen yarn is softer and fluffier and is made with wool that has been carded. So I have my carders over here. I use these guys to brush out some of these locks, the, the dry locks. And I did a batch of white Rolags, these loops. This is a bit of yarn, bit of fiber that I carded out on the carter and then I rolled it up to make a rollag and now I can spin from this to create some woolen yarn which will be light and fluffy and the fiber is going kind of different directions. I did a batch of brown so I did these two little batches of white and a batch of brown and now I can spin from these and I think I'm going to do some separated and then some combined where the brown and the white are combined to create kind of a streaky stripey yarn or fiber. I may do that after I've done the initial combing because with the carters, if I had done that with the carters, it just would have mixed the fibers up quite a lot. And so then it just would have like looked like a light brown rather than stripey. And I want, want this blocky kind of Jacob sheep look in my finished yarn to show up. So like this piece, you see the browns mixed in with the whites. So that is how my wool washing went. I'm pretty satisfied with the clean wool. It smells nice and clean. It doesn't have that um, dirty sheep smell. It has a nice clean wool sheep smell. And I am noticing that there's some dirt when I shake it. There's some dirt falling out and some vegetable matter coming out of the fiber. So I will do um, a put it in something, maybe a mesh bag or something, and swing it around a bit to try to get out the rest of the dust. But yeah, I think I'm going to end the video here because I'll possibly do another one in the future about combing or carding, processing this fiber. But I just wanted to share the process of washing this. I needed to get it out of my um, closet and get it washed because it was getting smelly and I needed to wash it to preserve it. So I'm going to allow this to dry and yeah, then I'll get to combing or carding it or whatever I'm going to do with it in the future. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this process and washing wool along with me. I will put a link to the book that I'm using in the description below, so check down there, as well as on my spinning resources page on my website. I'll put the link here and in the description below. I have collected all of the my favorite tools, spinning wheels, books, and other resources that I enjoy for spinning purposes. So check that out, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.